Excellent. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone who has joined us for a five-star meal presentation. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome. My name is Dr. Karen Abbey, Church Resources as Food Service Ambassador. I'm a food service dietitian. I uh, have a PhD in the area of food services and a special dietary chef. So we'll go to the next slide. Just our housekeeping for everyone who hasn't joined us before. Basically, as I said, everyone on mute, please, if you can, turn your uh, cameras off so I don't see you squiggling around. Uh, there will be time for questions at the end. If you follow the little, I suppose that's a little cloud thingy at the right hand corner, you can actually uh, put a question in and we'll be taking questions at the end, which would be great. We do, and we are recording this presentation. So for anyone who does miss it, it is available on the website after a couple of days for people to download and obviously look at any time. And if you want to get your gather your flock of staff and have an education session, you can certainly use these presentations for that. We will be having a survey at the end. So we really do appreciate people taking the time to fill that in. And there's some interactive polls. So make sure you have your mobile phone with you, preferably. Um, with you so you can take part in that as well. Before we kick off today's webinar, I just wanted to just uh, give us a little bit of feedback from our surveys that we've been getting over the last lot of webinars. We've had some requests for a texture modification presentation, looking at the how to present and obviously talk about texture modified meals. We have taken that on board and we certainly will be adding that to our, um, I suppose, future presentations that will be coming up. I just, uh, there's been a few comments about <laughs> hoping today there was going to be some uh, slides on uh, texture mod. There is actually, I think, two, but we're not really focusing on that today. So it has been, we, 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 love, we love all our members' feedback. So just to let you know, we've taken that on board. It's great. Next slide, thanks, Boris. Okay, so just to obviously welcome everybody. Again, I'm your host. Ian Birrell is a Procurement Australasia Category Manager for Food Service Solutions. So he'll actually, he's on board as well today. We have our guest speakers, Barry McGibbon, Hospitality Service Manager, Anglican Care Hospitality Services. We have Andrew Ballard, Executive Chef from Australasia, from Unilever, and Angela Malloy, a Marketing Manager from Country Chef Bakery Co. So we'll work, we'll be obviously talking to these guys throughout the presentation as well. Church Resources is very committed to supporting organisational procurement. This event continues in our series of education webinars, which you can find on our website, to actually help our members with, um, or basically supporting our members to really obviously upskill. We'd like to increase your knowledge and obviously, you know, support your role and work and provide practical information and resources always to help our members to do what you're currently doing even better. Thanks, Boris. So what are we doing today? Well, we're doing meal presentation. So we'd all get excited about that. And we obviously want to talk about why that's important. We obviously hear a lot about eating with your eyes and we're going to certainly focus on that today. We're going to talk a little bit about menu planning, uh, some techniques around meal presentation, the aged care, meals and wheels kind of sector, preferably a little bit more um, aged care, a little bit on meals and wheels. We're going to have a practical demonstration by um, Andrew from Unilever. We're going to be talking to Barry about actually a really great project and the work he's been doing with Anglicare. And basically, Angela's going to then finish us off with talking about um, some really good products that you can use and how to present those as well. So it's a little bit we're diving into is trying a little bit of different technology with this webinar. So of course, we'd love your feedback. But again, we're clearly trying to push the boundaries so we can bring you the very best and um, obviously give you great skills and, and education. Then basically, we're going to uh, do a little bit about procurement. And then at the end, we'll be taking questions, of course. So please make sure that you actually put those into the chat box. Thanks, Boris. Okay, so just to everyone, if uh, we, when we get to our polling, you will be uh, basically through uh, live Mentimeter. So I think we've got a Mentimeter coming up right now. So if you actually want to take your phones and you want to put it to the screen and use your camera, so those who actually can't do that, you can use www.mentimeter.com and you can use the code, which is 29053238. So you just put your phone up and I'll just obviously demonstrate how that happens. And then it takes you straight onto Mentimeter. So uh, that's what it should do. So you do that, get in nice and close. And then you go onto Mentimeter. Okay, so we'll just take the next slide. So again, for those who are doing the www dot, you've got to put the code 29053238. For those who are actually using your phone, and you put it up, 
you answer the question, what are some of the issues you face when it comes to plating meals? And you type in the word. Now, I actually discovered you can put a few words in if you want to. So you can actually put in words. You can put all sorts of um, things in your thing. Don't worry about spelling mistakes. We don't mind those at all if there's any. But you can basically see as they get submitted, then you can see the words actually grow. And that's how, this is great, this sort of, I love mini meter. So you can see that basically what people think is really important, how it actually works. And we'll just give it a couple more. This is our first one. We just give them a little bit of extra time to put some more words in. As you can see, it gets jumbled around a little bit. And so don't worry if you actually missed the first one. We've got a couple of these during the session. And once you've done the QR code, it'll stay on your phone and you basically can just, yeah, so there you go. Here we go. Everyone's running in now, putting in words, which is fantastic. Okay, just give that another couple of seconds. And as you can see, some interesting um, answers have come up. So again, looking at appealing. So the bigger the word, that means the most respondents have actually come through and said, you know, so time, presentation, appealing, colour, clearly are uh, words, that, themes that people think about when they want to present a meal, of course. So ideas, plating lines, temperature, those sorts of things are important as well. Great. So we'll be doing two more of those during this session. Thanks, Boris. Okay, so clearly from what we learned from Mentimeter, people think time and presentation, making meals look appealing is really important. The most important thing about any meal on a plate actually is our eyes and how our eyes perceive the meal in front of us. So the, the saying that we eat with our eyes is actually really true. And meal presentation is obviously very important. So, and that really does depend also if the meal is pretty dodgy looking, then it may not be eaten. And that's a problem when you actually have people who really do need to, you know, eat good nourishing meals like our elderly population. So you can see by these photos here that you've got on the sleeve, the first one uh, looks pretty ordinary, very lacking in color. The second one I think some will be very familiar with, basically it's with obviously the, it's a vitamized meal and it's got a lot of gravy over it and it's all poured all over the meal. And the last one actually, it may not look that appealing, but I did like this photo because it had a little pot of gravy, which I think is a great solution when you're trying to um, maybe not smother everything in gravy and giving the resident the opportunity to actually pour what they want. You could probably improve that meal easily by, you know, obviously putting a little bit of sweet potato or a little bit of carrot to actually bring a little brightness through it. But we do eat with our eyes and essentially we are drawn to foods that look very appealing and colour is an essential part of actually making sure that that meal is going to be perceived well and is presented well. Next slide. So meal presentation actually starts with menu design. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about things like colour and texture and shape and consistency, flavour, methods of uh, preparation like cooking techniques. And all of these menu planning characteristics are also important for meal presentation. So we'll just take the next slide. So let's just start with colour, clearly. Okay, so you can see again, the, the photo on the left looks pretty bland bit of curry with some rice and a, and a papa dom, pretty white actually. Then you see the obviously the photo next to it, again, a bit of a garnishing, a bit of uh, colour on top. You can see clearly that you've got that lovely two-toned and a little bit of garnish again. And even the one that looks very green and with obviously chocolate and cream with a little bit of different green actually gives that lovely colour contrast. So as I said, we really do eat with our eyes. Colour makes or breaks the meal. And on a plate, we want to be attracted to say, yeah, we really want to eat that. That's what we want to get. So again, there's a lot of techniques, but colour is actually really important, that colour balance. Equally important for your menu, but also equally important for presentation. Thanks, Boris. Texture and shape, again, making sure foods are soft, hard, crispy, crunchy, chewy, smooth, brittle, grainy, puree and smooth. Okay. So again, those sorts of textures and shapes can actually change the way in which a meal changes or is presented. Boris, can I have the next slide? The area where we really struggle, of course, is when we have texture modified, which of course breaks down all the structures and takes away that texture and shape of food. You can see the examples on the left aren't really great. And you can see basically in the middle how you can use some of those molded techniques to actually bring 
some, I suppose, shape to foods that are actually smooth. I'm not really going to spend a lot of time talking. That's why I said we're going to do another presentation one because there's also the minced and there's also the soft and all how that works. But generally speaking, obviously, when you've got any sort of texture modification, it does change the shape. And I suppose the ways in which we're doing texture right now is through scoops or we're doing things with food molds as well or we're doing things with piping bags or other ways to actually, you know, create shape, layers, all those sorts of things. So it's really important, I think, to just be mindful of the fact that when we do texture mod, that we have to be mindful of the fact you lose the shape, it can become bleeding in the colours joined together. And even when you have moulds, when you reheat them, they actually can change shape or distort a little bit. So again, you know, this is a fairly complex area to try and get presentation. And we do have another slide coming up, which I'll show you some really good ideas. But what I just wanted, before I move off this slide, is just talk about the middle photo and look at the way in which you can have texture modified meals using different types of crockery and different plates and patterns and things, and how that really lifts up the meal as well. Thanks, Boris. Okay, consistency. Again, this is just uh, another aspect of how you can actually change the presentation of the meal and also, I suppose, how the meal feels when it actually goes into your mouth. So that's things like smooth and crunchy and chewy and tender and the soft and the purees. Thanks, Boris. And of course, flavour. Now, of course, you, you don't look at flavour <laughs> at all. <laughs> like, you don't look at a plate, oh, look at that. But what you do is you can probably smell it. So that's actually something that actually improves the appetite as well. But it's important that when we eat things that they actually have flavour as well. And clearly, if you're going to have an apple pie in front of you, you want to make sure that apple pie tastes like an apple pie. Thanks, Boris. And obviously method of uh, preparation is really important too because that actually does change the preparation, uh, sorry, changes the way in which things are presented. If you have the same sort of cooking technique all the time, what happens with that is that everything's going to look the same. So like we said, we've only had soup on the menu, everything's going to kind of look the same. And again, that distorts the uh, actual uh, presentation of the meal as well. So it's really important that we uh, get uh, those sorts of things all in order to make sure that our menus are not only well balanced, but also that when the menu gets produced, that the actual meal itself has a lot of presentation balance as well. Thanks, Boris. Now, this is just an example I put together. As you can see, the photos on the left, or my left, or your right, my left, basically, you can see tomato soup, spaghetti bolognese, and strawberry. Now, apart from that, that's actually very red as well. So that's, you could argue that's a little bit of a poorly balanced kind of a meal because tomato soup and spaghetti bolognese, so you've got tomato tarte and your uh, strawberry mousse. That's one aspect you can say, but I also wanted to talk about just how quickly you could change that meal around a little bit by using a bit of garnishing, maybe changing some of the crockery, putting a little bit of a strawberry on the mousse and it changes around completely. So you can add green, it really does switch it around. It is poorly balanced because of the tomato soup and spaghetti, so you'd certainly throw out the soup or you'd change the spaghetti bolognese. But again, just looking at how a little bit of garnishing can actually really make the world of difference to a meal. Thanks, Boris. And so we're going to sometimes, we're going to talk about some presentation techniques. Andrew's certainly going to talk about some of the things that he's done to show us today. But again, looking at things like height is really important or layering our foods, having the correct uh, plate sizes are important. So you don't want all the food just falling off or there's nowhere for anyone to cut up. So again, correct plate sizes. And then looking at things like even the example down the bottom with the kinds of little decorations you can do on plates as well, just to, you know, provide a little bit of, um, a little bit of decoration and if you remember that photo I showed you first with the I think it was some schnitzels with a little pot of gravy if you actually put a smear of like a uh, carrot or sweet potato or pumpkin that would have lifted that meal unbelievably so and it really is such a simple technique to do so height garnishing decorations and correct plate size and for those who may not have seen our webinar number two which was on uh, choice we do have actually quite a lot of little examples about garnishing and little techniques you can use that actually you can, you know, in increase choice, but it would actually also improve presentation as well. Thanks, Boris. And plates and bowls. Okay, again, your plate sizes are really important, or your bowl sizes. You use bowls that have little patterns or things, or, you know, little rings. Again, in the dementia area, you can use the, obviously, the red to put some sort of distinction, color contrast. But again, uh, just a colour plate every now and again or a bowl could really make the difference to what meals. So plate sizes, light or dark, or also plate colour. Thanks, Boris. And also, we just want to talk about the meal service as well. So I really do appreciate how busy. I worked in a lot of aged care kitchens. I've certainly consulted in a lot of kitchens. And honestly, yeah, man, you guys are so busy. And I mean, it is really cutthroat trying to get everything done. So there's not a lot of time. 
So these meal services can be very rushed. You're saying, well, how do we do this? How do we play it? How do we do all those sorts of things? So hopefully during this presentation, we might be able to give you some ideas, you know, to help you with obviously, you know, taking home some things you can do in your own kitchens and for your residents. Sometimes the meal time can be a task. And of course, we, you know, generally want to try and move away, move to a bit more of a personal service. The dining room can be done really quick. You may have a lot of residents. Your dining rooms may be quite large. Again, all those sorts of things play in. How do you actually plate up a large amount of meals and wheels and things like that as well? How do you get all those sorts of things happening? So it's a very fast paced service. So we appreciate everyone is very time strapped, but um, as I said, hopefully we'll give you a couple of little tips to take home today. Thanks, Boris. Okay, back to the Mentimeter. So out goes your mobile phones again. So for those who have just joined us, uh, basically put your phone up to the QR code or go through www.mentimeter.com and put the code 2905. 3238. Thanks, Boris. We'll move to the question. And the question is, what are some of the issues you face when it comes to plating? Sorry, no, that's not the right one. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't moved along. Whoops. How would you improve the appearance of this meal? <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. So how would you improve the appearance of this meal? So put in a cup again, it's a word cloud. So how would you improve the so you enter a couple of words again. Wow. Yep, garnishings. I'll give everyone a couple of another 30 seconds to put some things in. So we've got colour, we've got variety, garnishing. Whoops, it's kind of disappeared. There you go. Less potatoes. <laughs> you might want to put a little bit of a gravy. You might want to put maybe a color, like a coloured sauce in there. What else we got? Different plate. Excellent. Well done. Oh, everyone gets good points. Brilliant. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, we've got a few more going in. Oh, excellent. Got about 24 people responded. Okay, so you can see there's a couple of ideas that it's not really, you can take a meal that's looking pretty bland and then try to actually do something. And of course, sometimes it's difficult. If you've got something like steak or chips or fish and chips, you know, they're actually kind of similar in colour, they're really bland. So again, thinking about maybe putting in like a little bit of a salad, it's got some colour through it or a little bit of a garnish or a sauce or just a little bit of a pick-me-up can sometimes just make, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated, it can be very, very simple. All right. Thanks, for everyone, for doing that. I next, need to press next question. Okay. I'd like to introduce Andrew Bella, the executive chef for uh, Unilever. He is going to uh, hopefully turn his, no, hopefully put his mic on <laughs> and basically Unilever has put together very graciously a little presentation so we're going to dive in and we're going to uh, put a video on for everybody to watch and Andrew's going to take us through some wonderful kitchen demonstrations looking at meal presentation using some of the Unilever products but also some of the country chef so Andrew I'll hand over to you to introduce the video uh, all right, guys, so uh, hopefully you can all hear me uh, now. So um, I'm uh, Andrew Ballard, the executive chef for Unilever Food Solutions. Um, so what we've done is a video using some of our, our Knorr, uh, our Hellman's uh, our products, uh, and also later on uh, there's some desserts. And we're partnered with the great uh, team from uh, the country, uh, Chef, and uh, we've, we've got some of their great products, um, some of the uh, pavlovas, uh, individual pavlovas as well, which um, we've partnered with them before, and they've got a great range of products. So I think uh, we can start the video, Karen. Thanks, Ed. All right, off we go. Uh, welcome to the Unilever Food Solutions Kitchen here today. My name is Andrew Ballard and I'm the Executive Chef and also Account Manager for Church Resources. I uh, want to thank uh, to Dr. Karen and Ian uh, for asking me to be a part of this webinar. Um, so what we're going to talk about is some plating uh, in aged care uh, and we're going to show some fantastic sort of gnaw dishes that we've used uh, some of the great products with. Uh, and then later on, uh, we're going to have some real fun uh, where we're going to show you some desserts. So, uh, we've partnered with Country Chef uh, and they've got a great range of products including banana breads and pavlovas is what we're going to look at today. So we're going to partner up with some cutter deal chocolate mousse uh, and show you some dessert options as well. So 
Really excited to be here. So what I've done first is I've made up a, a beef Rogan Josh. So this is part of the Unilever range. It's the Nor Patax Rogan Josh. So it's a sauce, uh, comes in about a two litre product there. So what we've done is here, um, we've uh, cooked off some beef. Um, so we're using a beef chuck. You can use a beef bowl blade, um, which is a more uh, secondary cut of meat. So it needs to be slowly cooked. So uh, we're looking at about cooking this uh, for about one and a half um, hours. Uh, on, a, on a low heat, or we can also do in your combi oven as well. So um, using some onions and some vegetables and some of the uh, beef chuck or beef bowl blade. All right, so um, we have that over here. So what I've done is uh, I've made up some mashed potato. So now, Anthony, if we show you this, um, see how easily beautiful and smooth that is. There's no lumps in there. So what this product is, is the Nor Potato Plate. Now, there can be a bit of a perception about these type of products. This is a 99% potato product. Essentially, it is uh, uh, being um, uh, harvested, peeled and cleaned, cut and cooked, and then mashed and dried. Uh, why is this an advantage? So, shelf-stable product, you bring water to the boil, add a bit of milk, uh, and you've got a fantastic smooth mashed potato. But you can also use it as a thickener. Uh, it is gluten-free as well. Um, you can make pizza bases, gnocchi, and multiple other things. So, a really, really versatile product. Um, all right, so... The other thing uh, in aged care is we want to be using different type of plates. So the colour the color of the plate is uh, very, very important. So we don't just have to have a plain white one. So I've got a few other different plates I'm going to show you uh, later on today. So um, this is a beautiful beef Rogan Josh. Now, if it is a tiny bit too spicy, um, you can also use half of the Rogan Josh sauce and half of the more Pronto Napoli uh, in there as well. So uh, that'll just make it sort of not too, um, too spicy. And our sauce is really important in aged care as well. So, um, you know, uh, swallowing difficulties and obviously ET and uh, dysphagia uh, can be an issue as well. But um, making sure your uh, your meat is really tender uh, and the sauce is also, you know, well covering the dish is very, very important. So, all right, I'm just going to grab some... Uh, just going to grab some nice fresh veggies that I've cooked up as well. Um, so you can use any sort of vegetable. Um, using different colours as well is, is really important. Uh, and also garnishing your food. So um, uh, garnishing is really is very important in all sort of aspects of food. So um, what we're going to do is put a bit of uh, yogurt on here as well. Yogurt goes great with curries. And then we'll put a bit of coriander on top as well. So um, you see with your eyes first and then you smell and then you finally get to taste the food. So really important that A, the food smells good uh, and then B, it looks good as well. And then if those two things are right, it's normally going to taste pretty good. So... What I've just got is some fresh coriander as well on the top. Um, and there you go. That is really, really simple. There's nothing complicated about this dish. Um, it's braising up beef using the right cut of meat, a nice sauce, uh, the beautiful normal potato, a bit of yogurt, uh, and there you've got a great dish. So that's our first one. All right, guys. So second dish we're doing, really simple again, beef bourguignon, uh, or, a, or a version of anyway. So I haven't used any wine. Now, um, you know, we know uh, we can use wine in aged care. We just got to make sure we cook it off. Um, but I haven't used any today. So what I've done is I've cut off some onions, uh, carrots, some celery, so essentially a mirror pie. Um, I've cooked off some bacon and some mushrooms. And again, we've got some of the beef chuck, um, but you could use beef bowl blade as well. Um, and then I've used some of the great new Nor Intense flavors. So um, this is uh, one of the products in the range, which is a marmy. So it's uh, suitable for vegans as well. Um, no artificial colors um, or flavors in, in that one there. So a great product just to boost a bit of flavor in that. Then I'm using the Nor Pronto Napoli. Um, so uh, you might not be aware of canned tomatoes. Of course we are. This is not. This is the ready to use Napoli sauce. So it's 95% tomatoes uh, grown in Italy, uh, all sustainable as well, picked once a year from Binder Can. cans. So this is ready to use. So canned tomatoes can 50% water. This is just simply ready to use uh, on a pizza base uh, as a pasta sauce or as my beef burger sauce here. So um, I've cooked that for about two hours um, to make sure that fiber breaks down of the meat. So Again, I've got some of the uh, beautiful mashed potato here. So coming to the cooler months, um, this is a great dish to do, and it's certainly one of the favourites of the residents that we've done uh, in aged care. So um, again, nice and saucy. So you want your dishes to be nice and saucy as well. And again, we've used, you know, we haven't just used a normal plain white plate. So this one, uh, I'm just going to pick a few herbs. Uh, and we'll garnish it with um, a bit of parsley. Um, so that is all. This is really, really simple. Um, 
and a few more little herbs over the top. And there we go. So that's beef bourguignon uh, using the fantastic Nor Napoli, Nor Pronto Napoli sauce. All right, so our third dish um, is one of my favorite dishes. It's a classic, um, so butter chicken. So um, yes, you can use a radish here sauce like the Rogan Josh, or we've got the paste range in the Nor Patek. So this is the Nor Patek butter chicken paste. Um, it's all made in the UK, so um, beautiful fresh spices. It's a great product. What I just do is add a bit of the Pronto Napoli, um, which is, you know, butter chicken is tomato based as well, and then a bit of cream, uh, or you can add yogurt as well. So what I've done is I've got some chicken thigh fillet that I've just sealed off, um, then I marinated for about an hour in the butter chicken paste, um, added some of the Nor Pronto Napoli and a bit of cream, uh, and that's our butter chicken ready to go. So I'm just going to plate this one up. Um, so I've got a bit of rice, and again, we're not using it as a, a, a plain bowl. We've got sort of a nice little greenish uh, colour bowl here today. Um, so the butter chicken now. So chicken thigh fillet, um, breast dries out a lot. You don't want to use that. Uh, chicken thigh is certainly the cut to use here. Okay, that smells fantastic. And, um, you know, unless you're an Indian chef, making authentic paste from scratch can be difficult. So this is a really great quality product, and this comes direct from the UK. Okay, so I've just got a bit of yogurt again, um, which goes over the top. Again, this is really, really simple food, but you know, I think that's what sometimes we overcomplicate things. So, um, using good quality ingredients, and you know, these products should be used as an ingredient, not just pour over a sauce and, and think you're finished. Uh, it's an ingredient to use to help you guys you know, in your kitchen to get flavour. So, a bit of fresh coriander on top. Um, there we go. So, that's the butter chicken using the Nor Patax butter chicken paste. All right, guys, so now my next dish is going to be a bit of roast salmon, mashed potato, and a nice sort of hollandaise sauce. So we've got the fantastic Nor hollandaise sauce here. Um, it's made with cage-free eggs. Uh, it won't split. Um, but don't just think of this as a breakfast idea. It goes great with fish, chicken, um, great with macaroni and cheese and those type of things. So really versatile product. So I'm going to add this into a pan, a um, bit of the hollandaise sauce, and I'm going to make a nice citrus flavour. So I'm using the Nor intense flavour, citrus fresh, which has got 750 grams of yuzu, mandarin, and lime juice. So... Uh, no artificial colours or flavours, uh, suitable for vegans too. So just add a bit of that in. You don't need too much because it is, uh, as they say, intense flavour. So that is my fantastic citrus sauce. Um, that's going to go with my bit of roast salmon. So I'm just going to put that up over the heat. Um, and we'll get a nice plate. So what we're going to use is a nice blue plate this time. So, you know, blue fish. Hopefully that is what you guys will get. So a bit of the mashed potato one again. Um, as you can see, no lumps in that. That's fantastic. Just going to get my salmon out the oven. So we get the salmon for a relatively good price, uh, frozen from our distributor. Um, so I've put a bit of the salmon on top. Um, if you can, and the residents are allowed to have it, the skin uh, with a tiny bit of salt on there, get a good, nice crispy skin as well. Makes it like a bit of salmon crackling as well. Um, just finish off with a bit of freshly cooked green veg. Um, or you could do a side salad, but I'm thinking sort of um, leading up into winter, um, some of the nice green beans and, and baby broccolini um, will be nice. Uh, and then our sauce. All right, and don't pull the sauce over the whole dish. So a bit of the sauce on the side uh, is going to be, you know, a slightly bit better as well. So nice bit of the hollandaise sauce, which is going to have a nice little sort of citrus flavour as well. Um, again, you can use just a bit of some fresh herbs. Um, again, always help the dish look nice. So um, just put a few more of them on, some red sole. There you go. So that's our last dish, last savoury dish. Uh, a nice bit of roasted salmon with a citrus hollandaise sauce, uh, mashed potato and some fresh veg. Now time for some dessert. So we're using these fantastic ready-made pavlovas from the Country Chef. So this is the Petite Pavlova. Um, which comes frozen from your distributor. So these are great. Um, we've been, I've been using these for years. Uh, they're an absolutely superb product, and you might have seen I've already had a few. So what we've done here, um, we've made a coolie. So I've used some frozen berries, um, and I've added a bit of lime juice and a bit of sugar. So I'm going to put that on the plate first. Now with my clean hands, um, I'm going to grab one of these fantastic pavlovas. Um, and now we've got the Carta Dior chocolate mousse. So it's a powdered product um, from Unilever. Um, so I've got a bit of a cornell of chocolate mousse over the top. Um, we're going to get a few fresh berries um, to put on the plate as well. 
And there you go. Now I'm just going to garnish with a bit of coconut milk powder uh, instead of icing sugar. Um, so that's the uh, normal coconut milk powder there. So there you go. Really quick, simple first dessert with a country chef pavlova, some chocolate mousse, berry coolie, and coconut milk powder. All right, so we've got our macerated berries this time, so not a coolie. Um, so it's just the frozen berries, a bit of sugar and a bit of lemon juice uh, onto the plate. All right, so we'll get our beautiful country chef petite pavlova uh, on there. And then we're just going to put some of the chocolate mousse next to it. And then garnish with just a slight bit of the coconut milk powder again. So. All right, so now we're going to do my version of like an eat a mess. So um, um, we've got a bit of our coolie, our sort of chunky macerated berries, um, which we've been putting in the bottom. The advantage is this can be made up early in the day as well. So we've got our beautiful petite country chef pavlova. So just going to break that up into some chunks and we'll put that into a dish like that. And we're going to layer it up as well. So put that in. We've got some of the Carta Dior chocolate mousse. So I'm just going to sort of pipe in into different areas. And then we'll add some of the more berries. Um, do this in a glass and you can see through it, so it looks quite nice with different colours and different textures. Um, so a bit more of the pavlova. So we'll put in a few of the frozen berries as well. Top that. There you go. So a quick version of a nice eaten mess topped with the fantastic Country Chef Pavlova. Thanks, Boris. Okay, so Andrew, do you want to just quickly give us a rundown of your range, please? Like you've obviously used some things in that presentation. Do you want to give us, give us a quick rundown? Sure. Okay. So um, uh, we have the brands Nor and also Continental Professional. Uh, so none of these products you can buy from Woolworths or Coles, just to let you know, they're all exclusive to food service and food service size. A lot of them we're making in Australia now. So World Cuisine, we've got a Thai curry paste range made in Thailand using all local ingredients. Uh, we've got a ready to sauce range which covers about six cuisines uh, and uh, Pronto Napoli sauce. Then we've got a whole range of gravies uh, under Nor and also Continental Professional. Potato sides, everything's powdered potato. It's um, you know, full of nasties and all that. It's 99.4% potato. It's a potato flake, a beautiful smooth mash. Soups, a range of powdered soups, uh, not to be used on their own, guys. Um, so make up your own sort of veggies and use this to extend it. Uh, and boosters as well. So beef booster chicken, uh, vegetable boosters, uh, and as well as the great Hellman's mayonnaise range. So we also do a few desserts under the Carta Dior range. So. Excellent. Next Go slide, next, thanks. Next Boris. slide, thanks. Yeah. Okay, we've uh, yeah, yeah, we've we've covered that pretty much. So that just is, is yep. a rundown next of all the sort of product that we do, so we can move on. So what right, do you so need leave as a fundamental role? Yeah, yeah. Sorry to interrupt there, Karen. So, um, look, we run a program called Refresh, and I urge you all to sign up on our website. Uh, so it's uh, ufs.com. If you put that in, it takes you there. And uh, with Refresh, uh, we do everything from plating tips. We do uh, interviewing uh, of aged care chefs out there, uh, leading people in texture modification. Um, we're actually working with the uh, TAFE New South Wales to to change how chef training takes place to include. I include texture modification. And I hear you guys are there because it is a very difficult thing. None of us are trained in it. Um, so we're looking at advising uh, them as part of the Aged Care Royal Commission, which we were involved in as well. So uh, head to the website and sign up. There's a, a monthly newsletter. We don't bombard you every day. And it's all about tips and tricks in aged care, um, about the easy guidelines. Um, and we've done a lot of research uh, out there. So it's certainly worthwhile. So Next slide, Andrew. Next slide, Boris. And this is just and what, what uh, I was Andrew just, was just uh, referring to. <laughs> yeah. We, we, uh, we develop energy. recipes just for aged care. <laughs> uh, just for aged care. So we do recipes that are nutritionally analysed as well. So you can have a look on there and put it past your dietitian. Uh, we've got about 15 chefs in our business. So um, uh, we, we seem to hopefully understand the industry. And uh, certainly aged care is a, uh, a big part of our business and something where we think we can also help. Uh, train and educate people. And it's uh, not about pouring a sauce out and, and putting it out there as a dish. It's about using these as an ingredient to help you guys in the kitchen because we know it is tough 
uh, you know, serving that amount of food for that amount of money in, in that amount of time. So we want to make it as nutritious and healthy and tasty as possible. Excellent. Thank you, Andrew, for joining us. And if anyone's got any questions for Andrew, just put them in the chat function. I'm sure when we get to the end, we'll um, obviously you'll be able to answer them for us. So we'll go to the next slide. And thank you, Andrew, for that wonderful presentation. So just as our last Mentimeter, so if you want to go to the next question. Okay, so if you've got your, on your phone, you should be able to tap in. Which one of these presentation techniques would be the easiest to use in your food services? So height garnishing, plate decoration, or using some colour crockery. So off you go, cast your vote. Okay, we'll just give everyone a couple of seconds. It looks like the, uh, <laughs> the garnishing techniques winning at this stage, which is fantastic. And while you're doing that, Barry might like to put his camera and his uh, microphone on while well, we're just waiting for those to tally through. Okay, well, look at that. Looks like it's a garnishing or a colour crockery. Okay. Oh, a bit of plate decoration. Excellent. So I think it's really important that there's obviously an, an, a few strategies that you can use to actually uh, do in, to improve your plate presentation. So I think, you know, be a bit bold, try a few new things, have a look at some photos, check out what other people are doing. I think it's all very interesting. And now we're going to, we'll move on. Thanks, Boris. We're going to move on. I'd like to introduce Barry McGibbon from Hospitality Services from Engley Care. Anglican Care. And thank you for joining us, Barry, this afternoon. Thank you very much, Karen. Pleasure to be here. Right. Um, so basically, so I was just going to start you off, actually, if I could. Um, no I'm just going to introduce you, actually, and just say Barry's been, uh, was pre presented at the um, National um, Congress for Nutrition that was held, uh, oh, I think it was in February, um, and did a very good presentation on a Meal Matter project, which I think incorporates a lot of um, presentation ideas as well as a whole dining experience. Now, this is a very, very big project and we've only really limited it down talking about meal presentation today. And I've popped Barry's email address down if anybody wants to ask any questions and feel free to ask questions as Barry goes through a little bit of a presentation. So basically, I, the first question is, Barry, why start Meal Matters? The well, Meals Matter project, we, we recognise that we needed to do something in regards to the the way that we did our food services across our homes and to enhance the dining experience. So our Meals Matter project is a reinvigoration of our entire dining experience and a change in the culture in the way that we do things uh, and the way that we deliver our food services across our organisation. So making sure that food was good in terms of look and taste, uh, presented and served in a way that was more of a restaurant style or bistro style than an institutional style. And the meals that the residents enjoy or our customers enjoy are more plated in a bistro style as opposed to hospital food on a plate. So, you know, with that vision in mind, we uh, provide us with a, a blueprint um, to change the, our service methods and dining areas within our existing homes. And, um, and also we have those considerations for any of our future food service designs as well. So, we realised we needed to set our standards first. And, uh, so okay, so just hang on, take Barry. Sorry, Barry, can I just get the next slide, Boris? Because we're going to yep. talk about the standards. Yep, take the next slide. Oh, yeah, so but we, these are the standards you actually developed. Yep, cool. Yeah, okay. So we, um, you know, so first off, we, we put aside um, the how and focused on the what. What was it that we wanted to do? So we focused in on, our, on what we wanted to do. So we realised that we really needed to set some standards and we broke that down into three separate categories so uh, different items wouldn't get lost. And those categories there on that slide are our service standards, um, which included staff attire and presentation, methods of service and dining room and room service standards. So not forgetting that people who our customers who need to dine in the room, in their room, because they can't make it out to the dining room for certain reasons, also needed to enjoy an enhanced dining experience. Um, then we, our other service standards were just on our, the, the ambience and the dining room and servery presentation. And that included cleanliness and how we actually um, served and cleared in the dining room so that 
that wasn't obtrusive, focused on crockery, cutlery, and our table settings to make sure that the dining room was presentable and it was an enhanced dining experience with some, some nice ambience and allowed the residents to, our customers to enjoy that experience in a nice relaxed atmosphere. And then primarily with today's um, presentation was a focus on meals and food service standards. So our third slot of standards were, were focused on the actual food. That included, the, included our preparation and finishing methods at each um, home to make sure that the meals were actually finished in a method that uh, you know, when we actually designed the menu, the meals were able to be finished in a method that enhanced the final product and the way that we intended when we first envisaged it uh, as we developed the menu. So therefore presentation of meals, texture modified meals, service temperature, and then the food service products that were supplied. And when I say food service products that were supplied, we found that a lot of our homes actually had varying um, food service products, so different coffees and teas and so forth. So we set that as a standard in regards to how we, um, or what, what, the food service products that we use across the homes were set at a certain standard and level, so therefore it was uniform across our, our homes also. Um, and all Sorry, of these I... items, yep, sorry, all of these items combined to create a complete dining experience. Yeah. Barry, while we take the next slide, can I just ask you, how many for homes do you look after? Uh, we've got 12 homes now, um, from the Central Coast, Newcastle, Lake Macquarie area, up to um, what they now call the Barrington Coast, which includes Taree, uh, Gloucester, and um, and Bulladilla. Cool. So you can just maybe just elaborate a little bit more on your meal presentation standard. We've got some really fine examples of um, of some. These are actually your photos and the recipes you're using. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, it was interesting with uh, your first feedback session there that um, there was a lot of feedback in regards to time being a hindering factor. Um, for meal presentation and plating. And that's one of the one things that we highlight when we're, when we're doing training is that these methods of service and meal presentation actually don't take any extra time. Uh, it's not just slapping food on a plate. It's actually just thinking about how we do things in the order of operation to make sure that we get food plated in a presentable manner, which can be done in any bistro, restaurant or aged care home. So some of these examples are right there in front of us on that slide and show that if we train the staff in regards to the way we actually lay out our, our Bay Marie um, and then progress across the Bay Marie so that it's in some sort of shape or form of logical order, then lo and behold, the actual way that we present our meals is, uh, is quite easy and presentable. And so therefore, you, because you, which is actually a really good uh, technique for everyone to um, understand how to use, because Barry's quite correct, you can see the order of the meal delivery. And you can see there that how easy it was to build height, to put in garnishings, to actually you know, mix up the colours really nicely to actually produce these meals. We'll have the next slide, thanks, Boris. And so uh, here is, sorry, and, you, and garnishing was one of your key techniques, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, we've just got a couple of breakfast items here. So we've got the Boston beans and pulled pork. We've got the sauteed mushrooms and the scrambled eggs. A couple of simple dishes, but that little bit of garnish on top, that little bit of care at the end, um, brings that up in, in quality and, uh, and presentation. So, yeah, as you mentioned before, it's, uh, we eat with our eyes and it's, it's not just food on a plate. So just that little bit of extra care and love actually provides a bistro or restaurant quality meal presentation. So a bit of height there, a bit of garnish. Uh, yeah, that's a breakfast from any cafe in town. And really one of your keys is training, is that right for your staff? Making sure the staff are trained to know how to do this very quickly onto plates. Exactly, that's right. So order of operation, um, having all your missing plus there ready to go. And away you go, you start plating up, finish it off with a garnish and out it goes to the table. Excellent. Next slide, Boris. Oh, okay. okay. Here we are. Well, I did put that one in. <laughs> I, I, know why, I know why you put it in, and it's one of my um, old school favourites. It's uh, the old four ball texture modified meal <laughs> plate up method. Um, yeah, so we can move well, on. Well, how, how about we go to the next slide and we'll show something far better? <laughs> so, one of, so 
one of the um, things that we did focus on with our standards was our texture modified meals. It wasn't just in regards to the quality and flavour, and that's one of the things that we did focus on is making sure that the menus align so that our texture mod our residents or customers on texture modified meals enjoyed the same quality and flavour food that everyone else was uh, receiving. So therefore, they didn't lose out on the flavour. So we're taking a portion out from whatever we're making and make sure that that's texture modified and um, all those flavours are enjoyed for those residents. But one thing we did focus on, I mean, we did um, have a look and investigate in regards to using moulds and um, so forth, but we end up opting for a bit of a um, contemporary method of plate up um, and utilising um, the texture modified food to actually build a, um, a bit more of a contemporary approach. So you've got your, your, um, your pureed carrot, and so forth on the base there, and then we've got our, our um, protein in the middle, the veg on either side. Um, and, you know, same again, additional cost was zero, additional time was zero, additional presentation was 100%. Um, I was gonna, I there, was... Sorry, another method there, and that other photo um, that's just on the, uh, on the left is instead of plating everything up, you know, so, if, you might go to a restaurant or a bistro and you've got your chicken korma that's in a separate bowl and then some rice and veg on the side. You know, so just thinking outside the square, there's no reason why a texture modified meal can't also be plated up by just utilising a bit of extra crockery on a plate um, and giving that bit more of a contemporary feel also. Okay, that's really good. And you just notice one of the photos then also uses a different colour kind of bowl or crockery. Again, just making the meal look a little bit different. We'll just take yeah. the next slide. Um, okay, you've surprised me with these ones. I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for these, but yeah, these are great slides. I mean, this, as I mentioned before at the start, in regards to the meals matter project, we also um, utilise or set some standards to utilise these for when we um, refurbish some of our homes and um, and to enhance the whole dining experience. So you had Toronto nursing home there. There was a lot going on in that space. It's very dark and old school. And then we refurbed that and it created a nice bright space with the introduction of a breakfast bar and self serve area, a bit more interactive and um, a nice enhanced dining experience all around. Yeah, sorry about slipping that in. I just really wanted to, I thought it'd really be a shame not to show just how extensive your project was, Barry, in terms of you really went and put a lot of effort in changing all your dining room areas, which as we talked about at the beginning, you know, a nice dining room matched with really nice meal presentation, I think uplifts the entire dining experience. And we'll just take yeah. your last slide. So what have been the results? So the results are um, uh, the, the initial and almost immediate response and results for residents uh, enjoying an increased choice and uptake of the meal selections. But, <laughs> If people don't know what they're eating or they've lost a bit of confidence in regards to um, the meal presentation or the food or the dining experience, we find that uh, they really just opt for a sandwich so they can eat and go and, and that sort of thing. But with an enhanced dining experience and uh, meal presentation and focus on quality and flavour, our, our customers are now enjoying a lot more um, hot meal choices, which reduces the uh, the need for sandwiches and salads and, uh, and, and when we design a menu and when we focus on on quality main meal choices that's what we want people to that's what we want our customers to be enjoying so we've had a lot more uptake on that improved customer satisfaction well says it all in itself you know the enhanced dining experience the quality of flavor and meals and meal presentation has obviously improved the, the customer satisfaction reduced weight loss and reactive requirements um, coming back to the sandwiches and uh, or not enjoying a meal and um, just just having something quick to eat and, and going as opposed to lingering and and, uh, and enjoying a full meal um, that always has its uh, weight loss issues and their reactive requirements such as having to have the use of supplements so with a holistic and whole food approach and a focus on meals on, on meals and the enhanced dining experience and encouraging residents to stay in the dining room longer and enjoy a full meal, uh, it has its um, proactive approach or react you know, proactive um, action because they're actually enjoying a full meal and, and receiving the full nutrients that they should be as we, when we design a menu.
Um, so therefore, reduced documentation in care notes so as a result, you know, not having to monitor weight loss so much. Improved quality outcomes and compliance. Uh, increased opportunity to maintain independence. Now that that item's in there because uh, not that we touched on that today, but with the introduction of our continental breakfast buffets, um, yeah, some of the residents who can help themselves are quite um, encouraged to help themselves, so therefore maintain a level of independence. Um, less complaints and time spent on reactive fixes. Improved staff morale and confidence. Now that's a good one because if residents are enjoying a meal and enhanced dining experience, they're having a good time. So they're not, uh, staff morale is there and improved confidence. And that also comes off the back of our training as well. So the staff have a, um, an improved level of confidence in regards to the way that they do things in the dining room and interact with residents. And then reduce workloads. So being more service orientated as opposed to task driven. So because of that training and the way that we actually take orders at the table and and uh, have an enhanced dining experience, we've become more service orientated and we're not pre-setting things and we're not task driven. So therefore, um, by actually asking residents what they'd like at service time, as opposed to going and just pre-setting drinks and that sort of thing, we've actually become more service orientated. We've um, improved the dining experience and we've actually reduced workloads. Excellent, excellent. Well, I think everyone would agree that's a that's a very big project. It looks like you've had some spectacular outcomes. Thank you, Barry, very much for sharing that with us. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more you could share, but we're going to be moving on now to the next slide with Angela. But thank you for that. And also, um, questions, please put those in the uh, chat function and we'll get to that. So Angela is, um, is the marketing manager from obviously Country Chef. And we're just going to quickly go through a bit of a, a bit of a quick background about where Country Chef. It's actually a Queensland company, so I'll let Angela speak to this slide. And welcome, Angela. Thanks, Karen. Hi, everyone, and good afternoon. And thanks very much to Andrew too for doing such a great video with some of the product. It was really nice to see the outcome of that one. Um, so, to everyone, we just wanted to give you a bit of a heads up on who we are. Um, we're actually a family-owned company and we've actually got three generations of the family in the business and I work close with one of them who's just off to my side here, Tamsin. Um, we're based here on the Sunshine Coast um, and we've got about 170 people throughout the business. Uh, basically, from our point of view, we pride ourselves on having pretty clean label products. So from our view, some of the things that we do in that space, so we make sure all our bananas for our banana bread, which I'm going to talk to you about, are from North Queensland. Um, we only use Australian sugar, we only use Australian flour, we use Australian eggs. So in terms of who we are as a business, where we produce and the raw materials and all the products that go into our food, it's all really Australian focused. Um, so our heritage in that space is really important to us. Um, I guess in terms of what we do in food service and for aged care, we have a lot of um, a pavlova product. So we're really focused on, I guess, the heritage of our business started with pavlova and really started with restaurants and catering and in that space of making sure that we had a really cost effective product that tastes great. And we also think saves time because sometimes, as Andrew was showing, you know, if it's a really humid day and your meringue isn't rising and you've got a lot of other things to do, it's a lot easier to go to a freezer and just grab out what you need and know that there's going to be no wastage at the end of it. So from that point of view, Pavlova has been really strong for us um, in this space for a really long time. Um, just in terms of us as a business, um, we continue to grow and we keep expanding into our facilities. So we keep investing, um, the owners keep investing, and we just keep on selling more pavlova and banana bread. So that's a good thing. Um, and we're just expanding into some other formats. I'm going to take you through that now to show you some of the other things that we offer. Uh, next slide, Boris. There. Thank you. Um, so just in terms of our pavlova and our products, um, we've got a range of about six pavlovas uh, and all different size offerings. So today Andrew showed us the dessert with that petite pavlova. Um, just in terms of uh, the nutrition information we were talking about before, all our products are nutritionally tested. So uh, they are gluten free and we test and verify all our products uh, for gluten free so our production sites of gluten free facilities as well. Um, the products are vegetarian as well. So if you've got some other dietary people um, that you need to cater for, you know that that's there with the Pavlova product. Um, also too, we're talking today about texture. Um, pavlova obviously is a really quite a nice mellowy texture, quite a nice strong flavour hit because it's quite sweet. So in terms 
you know, we think that that also for us is something that people have fed back to us that um, is, is a really strong piece of the product. Um, and in terms of size, we do a number of range of shapes and sizes. So I guess in terms of wastage, you can use what you need and you can leave the balance in the freezer. Um, the way the products are packed, you can order sort of one dinner. When you need a few, you're able to order it by inner. You, know, you don't have to order like the entire carton type of thing. Um, I guess interestingly too, one of the things Andrew was showing before was just how you can put colour on the plate and presentation that's come through from you guys is something that's really important today. So from us, you know, Pat Lover, you can um, present it individually. So I guess portion serves and people feeling that they've got that served just for themselves is a really nice sort of look and there's many things you can do. Um, if we go to the next slide. Uh, just Boris, hang on a tick, Angela. Sorry, Angela. Can I just ask everyone, make sure you're on mute, please? We've actually got some interference coming through. So can everyone just make sure your mutes are on? Sorry, Angela, just getting some disruption with when you're talking, that's all. Sorry, keep going. Um, thanks, Boris, for the slide update. Um, so Pavlova is one of the main products that we do and you might know us about. We also do, um, as we were talking before, a lot of banana bread. So all these banana bread, uh, all the bananas come from Queensland around that Tully, North Queensland region. Um, we put probably it's about 27% banana bread in all our loaves. So, um, so we have quite a high content and you get a, quite a fresh banana taste with our product. So in terms of taste being one of the key drivers for your um, customers, it's a really quite a clean tasting product. You can get a lot of sort of fake tasting banana products and quite lolly products on the market. So it's quite a clean product. Um, we don't use any artificial colours or flavours um, and the banana breads are also vegetarian and we do offer a gluten-free um, option as well. Um, so in terms of formats and things, one of the things we were talking about before was that the bulk product is really can be quite cost effective for you because you can actually slice that in half and so you're actually getting quite a lot out of the order that you get in your um, carton. Um, but alternatively, I guess last year was just so strange for everybody and you know people that needed to change to offer um, packaged and wrap product because of COVID, we we're able to do that as well. So we do have individually wrapped product or bulk depending on what you're actually doing. Um, and the banana breads, we've had people in the past also um, in the aged care space make them into desserts as well. So put them into a neat mess style product that Andrew was doing before. Um, again, quite a smooth, when you're putting it in with a custard or something like that, that I know Unilever do, um, you're able to get quite a nice smooth texture in that as well. So again, it can, therefore, if you've got it in bulk, you can pop it into a dessert or you can have it as a you know morning tea snack and that type, type of thing. So we found it's quite a clean eating product and it's pretty versatile for everybody. Um, next slide, Boris. Um, so these are the new format products that um, we've uh, started to make here um, at our Sunshine Coast factory. Um, we've introduced a range of cupcakes. Um, so we've got uh, cupcakes that are a regular size, sort of a 70 gram meat. Then we've got some tiny petite ones as well, which are great because you can offer them as a um, uh, just a morning tea or even a little dessert. So again, they're quite versatile. And one of the things with these products is that you don't actually have to, like the pavlova, you've got to do a little bit of dressing and you can put all your seasonal fruits and things on. But with these products, they actually already come, um, some of them are already finished off, like the cookies and cream has already got cookie crumb on top. So you don't have to actually um, do any more garnishing to them if you didn't want to. Um, and pretty much we've got classic flavours there. So if you didn't want the cookies and cream because of the, the texture of that cookie, um, you've got a red velvet or a chocolate or a, or a mini vanilla. So they're all pretty classic flavours. And then it's up to you. You can either jazz them up and do something a bit more special or you can um, just serve them as they are. Um, so that's quite, quite a bonus. Um, and in terms of the petite desserts, um, again, we find these are really quite cost effective because people can offer them as type, um, potentially a dessert as even three serves on a plate and you can do that for under a dollar um, or if you want to just want to make it smaller it, individually they're all reasonably cost effective as well um, and again from our point of view you know minimal waste um, individual portions that are quite you know nice for people to have their own special um, special piece um, and uh, and from our point of view, everything there is, is made um, here in the factory. Um, so good to know that if you want to feedback to us any other flavours or um, product sizes that you're looking for, we're always keen to understand what you need particularly. Um, but in terms of taste and presentation, we're always trying to think of things that we can do differently and hopefully that really addresses not only the nutritional needs that you have for the people um, that you're looking after, but also that taste and that colour and that presentation that we've been talking a lot about today. 
Thanks, Angela. That was really good. And for those who are with us, we'll take the next slide, Boris. And for those who are with us last one, we actually did talk about mid-meal snacks and what that actually could uh, be like. So basically, uh, we're just moving on very quickly because um, I've just noted the time. We need to get to questions, which is exciting. So basically, just I'm a supply partner as well for Church Resources. I don't want to spend a lot of time here. If you'd like to get my newsletter, you can just go to www.nutcat.com.au and subscribe. But I do want to actually talk about the Nutrition and Catering Institute. So this is the first food service institute that's in Australia, and we are solely looking at how we can improve skills for food service workers. So it's starting to rev up and do lots of interesting projects and stuff. So stay tuned. And if you want to know about that, you have to subscribe to this newsletter to actually find out that more about the NACI. We'll take the next slide. Thanks. Okay, passing on to Ian uh, now, who's going to give us a very brief rundown on uh, church resources. Thanks, Ian. Thank you, Dr. Kay, and um, uh, hello to everyone. Uh, certainly thank you to Andrew and thank you to Barry and, and Angela for coming on the webinar. It's been uh, just fascinating from my end. Um, for those of you who um, don't know too much about uh, Church Resources, we're part of Procurement Australasia. Um, we have another sister brand called Procurement Australia that's um, based out of Melbourne and Church Resources is based out of Sydney. Um, from a food service category perspective, uh, we have um, a membership for the food service side, Excellence and Food Service Program is, is, is free and most of uh, you who have attended today would already be members, but I would say that if you talk to anyone else who's in the not-for-profit sector in particular, then um, please get them to find out and uh, maybe um, subscribe and join the membership. Um, we aggregate as a business for all sectors uh, within the not-for-profit uh, areas where we specialise over the past 20-odd 20, 20 years. Um, and we certainly have a really good affinity and understanding of the, uh, of the sector. Um, we are very much seen as a trusted advisor. Um, we, we operate and work on behalf of our members, um, and it really is about um, seeing what we can to make their lives easier in their day-to-day -day operations, as well as really utilising the uh, combined volumes that our members who come under our contracts um, to, to obtain the best possible um, not just price, but also service as well from um, supply partners. Um, as a buying group uh, under the, in the food service space, our members spend about $40 million a year, um, which obviously gives us access to a, a lot of different um, uh, value adds that our supply partners can, can uh, provide us and also um, our members. So it certainly does assist not just from a price perspective, but as I said, from a service perspective as well. Our partners, uh, some of Australia's uh, leading uh, and iconic companies, um, some of the international ones as too. You, you obviously, uh, Andrew's come on board from Unilever today. We've had the Country Chef Bakery Company on board. And we're certainly um, able to bring them to these educational events such as this in, in an educational way and provide greater product knowledge and, and greater um, experience and operational um, uh, knowledge and training that uh, will certainly uh, help our members. And certainly with uh, Barry coming on today, that um, is, is just fantastic that one of our members is to be able to spend time too and, and show us what they're doing within their environment because it, you know, it really is what is happening on the, uh, on the ground level. Um, as part of our uh, service as an organisation, we provide benchmarking for all our members that is complimentary, uh, whereby we just take their existing food contracts and from their suppliers and compare that to what it would look like under church resources. It's very straightforward and um, it certainly provides the member with the, the result that they've either got really good agreements and supply agreements in place, or there may be op opportunities to uh, and benefits by coming under church resources. As I said, from our point of view, it very really much is as a consultancy basis in, in that we are looking for what is best for the member um, and uh, to ensure they get the best result and provide the best services from their supply partners. Uh, from an educational event point of view, these webinars have been running now. This is our sixth one. Um, we've had really good attendance, so I want to thank you all for that. Uh, obviously, thank you, uh, Dr. Karen Abbey, for organising it all at her end, and, and the supply partners that come on board, as well as the members who really uh, give their time as well. But we want to continue with these events, and really do encourage you to uh, put in the chats or send through an email what areas you would like to um, have covered off. And um, certainly, uh, Dr. Karen will be able to put together a webinar from that perspective. Um, but certainly, um, these, these events, we know that they don't happen very often within the 
the sector that we're looking after in aged care and, and quite often when they do take place um, there's a cost to it so we're committed to providing these um, for our members as part of the service and certainly uh, encourage you to come up with uh, some additional topics um, and we, we also have a food service uh, fortnightly or quarterly newsletter that goes out so that gives further information on our supply partners um, as what's happening in their space, whether it's new product development or whether it's uh, current uh, offers that are going out. And, um, and um, uh, to make sure that uh, the members have the, the most current up-to-date information. Some of the information you can, uh, you can find on our website, uh, some of the articles we send out and the previous webinars that we had that have taken place. Um, you'll go to our website and you'll be able to find them there as well. And as Karen said right at the start, this webinar will be recorded and will be available there after a, a couple of days for you to look at. And with that, I will pass you back to Dr. Karen. Thank you very much. And just and just to, thanks, Ian. That's great. Just to finish off, uh, we are building a resource library for everybody. So we have put up a, a bit of a meal presentation resource which has got some of those tips that we talked about today. So that's going to be available and also will be sent to all people who are obviously fill in our survey. And then also we have a, a resource from the Country Chef Bakery Co in terms of the products you can buy. And also we'll be putting up the recipes that were done by Unilever at some stage. They'll be there. So go and check that out as well because that's really, it's starting to build into some quite big, Oh, well, quite a lot of resources you can actually use and um, take benefit from. So we'll take the, oh, there you go, next slide. <laughs> Excellent. So basically, to summarise, and we'll get into our questions, um, hopefully we've provided some easy tips and ideas, um, something for everyone to actually try, um, the practical and how-to, which is really important, and meal presentation is important for every meal. As I said, please take it time to fill in our survey to help us out. That would be great. We actually uh, haven't scheduled our next event. We're just uh, going to have a bit of a planning and we're just looking again, bringing all our ideas together as to what they will look like. So I suppose watch this space and make sure you subscribe to our newsletter. Next slide. Okay, and there we go. Contact detail, details for both Ian and I. If you want to talk to us, feel free. We do answer or try and answer all our emails. So if you need to ask something after this webinar, feel free to do so. So I'd like to actually thank everybody for attending. We're actually now going to ask Barry, Angela and Andrew to put their cameras and their mics back on. I'm going to hand over to Ian to um, facilitate some questions um, and see, uh, we'll, we'll have a bit of a discussion about today's presentation. Thanks everyone.